So this is an update on my uh, pole vaults, my do-it-yourself trekking poles with storage. I used them for 220 miles on the North Country Trail. Uh, the little screw caps worked out just fine. Actually, I was very happy with the poles, uh, but not completely. Um, stay tuned and we'll go over some of the issues I've had and what I've done to try and correct them. And we're still in beta testing. So one of the problems I had with these poles, if you remember in the first video that I had uh, bear hanging rope braided here, and that was just a little too abrasive. You know, I got some calluses uh, in my thumb area here. You know, even my trekking poles with the cork handles give me, you know, after a few hundred miles, you'll get some callus. Uh, I used to get it on the palm. Uh, but just grabbing that rope all the time and, and walking, you know, moving that uh, stick a million times a day, it just created calluses. So what I've done is gone to tennis racket, baseball bat uh, tape. Uh, it still has a lot of grip, but it's much softer. You can buy it any Walmart store, online, Amazon, any sporting goods store. And I think that's going to work out. We'll see, you know, how that wears and uh, if it lasts. But that's that's my newest uh, grip idea. The other problem I had was, if you remember, I was telling you that I used these test tubes, flat bottom test tubes with a screw cap. Um, Two things I did. One, I bought grommets. Uh, if I'm carrying liquid, I'll put a rubber grommet in that cap. You can buy it at any hardware store. And uh, seals it just that much better. I think these uh, cardboard inserts that are in here probably um, saturate and, and leak a little bit. But the rubber grommets didn't leak at all. I had olive oil. I had alcohol. I had bug dope. I had all kinds of liquid and semi-liquid things in these and bouncing around in these poles all day. It was no problem. But one problem I did have is uh, I carry my stakes in these poles and to do that these are only about four inches and I can't find longer ones. I need 28 millimeter and if I had six or eight inches, uh, if I could find those, I'd buy them. But since I can't, I just screw the top out of one, cut the threads off right down here so I get the full diameter of 28 millimeter. And then I cut the top out. I just drill it out so that I can get my stakes in. It just elongates these uh, test tubes. So even with my stakes, I've got to put them in about one at a time. But anyway, drill that cap out, put it in upside down, glue it in there, and then these come together. Now the problem is that has to be perfectly straight for it to slide into these poles. And so um, I didn't use enough glue. Uh, the cap came a little bit loose. And what happened was this became stuck in the pole because it just wasn't straight. So now when I glue them, I glue them really good. I tape them, I put them in the pole and let it cure so I know that it's straight enough to go down into that pole. And uh, you know, you're, not every stake's gonna fit in here. I get six stakes in here and uh, I'll show you the stakes that I've always used. They're the only stakes I use, uh, and there's a reason for that. But anyway, they all fit down in here. They come together, then they will slide into the other tube, and it takes a little finagling to get them to go in there. And uh, But once they're in there, they're good and solid. So I use these stakes. I mean, these stakes will work for me. You're not going to get every stake to fit into these things. And you don't want to just put loose stakes in here because they'll just jam down in there and you'll never get them out. 
So you're not going to get every steak to fit into a tube like this. In fact, probably just these. And these, But these are all I have ever used. These are great steaks. I'll tell you about them in a minute. But anyway, even these, because of that hook at the end, they have to go in one at a time. And they have to uh, come together enough to fit through that threaded second test tube. But I can get six of them in here without much problem. And uh, once I get it all together, they fit in there. They screw together. It's nice and straight. Down the bottom of the tube it goes. Not a problem. When I want them, out they come. So I've been using these pegs for several years. They're called tri-peg tent stakes. You can see they're manufactured for or by Hilleberg, but they've been discontinued. And they came with my Hilleberg Enon. And ever since I've had them, that's my go-to stake. Uh, you, it's five and a half inches long. You can drive it all the way in. On all my tent tie-outs, I have elastic loops and so I pull it out, the loop goes in the hook, drive that right into the ground, put a rock or a log on top of it, and that tent's going nowhere. And that five and a half inches is plenty of purchase. It's sturdy enough that I can just pound the heck out of it with a rock in hard ground. Like I say, it doesn't matter if it's sand or soft dirt, I'm going to put a rock on top of it anyway. That's why... Two reasons I put the elastic on the tent. One, so I don't wear out my tent tie outs. I'm actually wearing out the elastic with, you know, abrasion from the rocks or whatever I'm putting on. And the other thing is with a sill nylon tent like my Enon, uh, it gives a little bit as it gets wet and that uh, stretch helps keep the tent uh, taut all night long. But anyway, these now fit perfectly in those test tubes. So if you're going to try this, you're going to have to find something that's similar or uh, find a manufacturer that makes a stake like that. I'd give you some of mine, but I'm hanging on to them. Keep smiling. So I'll leave a link below on... Uh... How to build these if you missed that video this is just an update to that video and i'll keep updating it as i find problems and fix them happy trails